Hello, this is Jill from Paper Daisy Crafting. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, then we've got a new project for you today. This is it. It's a case of the catalogue. I did this card for a blog hop at the weekend, which was case the catalogue. Um, and I decided to look through the catalogue and just to make the first card I came to that I liked and that I thought I could recreate. And I didn't get very far. I just opened the catalogue at this page and got as far as here. And I just love this little card here. I think I've done it slightly differently to them looking at it. I think they've they've cut the, the butterfly out of the DSP and then layered this on top. But actually, I'm going to do it the same as I've done here. I don't think it really matters. But anyway, we're going to make a version of this. Not exactly the same, but similar. And not exactly the same as this one either, but similar. So... What do we need to do? Right, I mounted mine onto a onto a square card base. I've got lots of envelopes in my stash that are this size, so that's good. It's 14 by 14 centimetres. If you want it in inches, I will tell you it is five and a half. Yeah, five and a half inches. And the two panels, so we've got a panel of cardstock, which is four and a quarter and it's 11 centimetres square. And then the, the square of um, pattern paper is four and an eighth. And in centimetres, it's 10 and a half. So let's make our card blank first of all. So I've got a sheet of thick, basic white cardstock. I'm gonna take my trimmer, and I'm first of all gonna trim this down to 14 centimetres, like I said. So it's 14 by 14 or five and a half inches by five and a half. Ooh, I've got something caught in my trimmer here. Let's get that rid of that. Right. So put it that way and then turn it the other way. And we are going to score this time at 14. And then there'll be a bit to trim off. So if I take that to one side and just... Line that up and find my bone folder. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a there's an, an, an overhang there, which I need to trim. So I'm just going to mark with the pencil and then pop that back in my trimmer. And trim that section off. So now I've got a 14 by 14 card blank. While I've got my trimmer out, I will trim the other pieces that we need. So I'm gonna use pe um, polished pink today. And this piece is gonna be 11 by 11. So I'm gonna line that up. Like so. And, oh. And then I'm going to take a different piece of PSP from the same pack, but I love this one. I've got very little of this pansy petal paper left. I've used so much of it. I've used quite a lot on customer thank yous and things like that. Um, so I've not got an awful lot of it left now. So just using up my last little pieces. So 10 and a half by 10 and a half. This is... I always keep these little bits because they will come in useful. So that will layer onto there, like so. There. Um, right, but before we do all of that, oh, actually, we could we could actually just be um, gluing all of that. We could glue all of that before we carry on. Um, there we go. So I'm going to glue my DSP. I'm just going to go around with my bone folder. Make sure I get rid of all the lips that it causes on this cardstock and even on the DSP. I just like a nice flat surface to stick. There we go. Anything on here? Yeah, just there. You can feel them quite easily, but just with something like a bone folder, you can squeeze them out and then it's nice and flat. Right, so I'm going to take my Tombow and I'm going to mount my DSP panel, my patterned paper. Some, a lot of people are always asking why we call it DSP. It stands for Designer Series Paper. I have no idea where that name ever came from. 
Um, it is very confusing if you're not a stamping up person to know what that means. It means patterned paper, basically. Most of our patterned paper, a lot of our patterned paper comes in, in 12 by 12 packs and it is usually double-sided. Most of it is double-sided and most of it uses a colour combination that, and so that they all coordinate together. Um, these, these cards are a really good example of how everything coordinates in Stampin' Up! So you can already see how my pink is picking out the pink of these pansies. And then that's going to mount in the middle of my white card blank like that. And then I'm going to put this to one side while we do the butterfly. Just like so. being quick tonight so I'm not spreading out my glue I'm probably going to live to regret it um, there we go make sure it's straight the Tombow will give you a little bit of wiggle room so you can eyeball it and decide whether it's straight or not if you're really pedantic you could measure it I think that's straight I think that's okay yeah okay so I'm just going to put that to one side while we do the butterfly. So to make the butterfly, first of all, so the butterfly dies, we get this big die that are all joined together. And then we get these, which are all the individual butterflies. I'm using the biggest butterfly from the pack here. So I'm using that one. So that's fine, I can cut that out. But in order to cut this one out of my petal pink, I kind of need to know how big a piece of card, because I don't want to waste cardstock by cutting out all the other butterflies that I don't need. <coughs> so I'm just going to give myself a couple of little pencil marks where I need to cut this so that I know that will fit on. So I'll just grab my little chopper here and just cut that down. Just can't bear to waste too much cardstock, really. So, right, so that's going to be my piece to cut out my butterfly when I get my die cutter out in a minute. But before we do that, I'm going to do the coloured, the one that goes on top. So I've got a piece of cardstock here that, again, I have measured to make sure that that will fit on there. And then I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to take two polished pink blends and two pale papaya blends and I'm starting with the, the darkest petal pink I'm going to colour along the bottom here you don't need to be very careful while you do this so there's my polished pink that's my dark polished pink all those lines will disappear as it dries because these are alcohol markers so that's dark pol polished pink and then I'm going to come in with my light polished pink oh if I can get the lid off there we go they're quite stiff these and still quite new and we're going to do that and I'm just going to blend at the edges so that I get a nice blended edge and not a straight very obvious blend there so I'll just go over that with the light there and then I'm going to take the dark pale papaya do the same again I'm going to go over the over the join to make sure those colors blend together nicely like so you can really get high on these pens, you can tell they're alcohol markers. And then lastly, the pale papaya. I'm doing this on a piece of scrap paper because it goes through the card, so you'll see it'll go through the card. I didn't want it to mark either my table or my grid paper, so I'm just doing it on a piece of scrap paper. Just be careful when you're using the blends because they do go through to the other side, even a thick wisp or um, basic white. Right, there we are. That's our piece of cardstock. So now we're going to cut out our two butterflies. So 
I'm just going to move my grid paper out of the way or that will slide around while I get my die cutter out. There we go. I'm going to use my big die cutter today. Probably these would... Oh, no, the big die won't go through the little one. That's why I've been using the big one. The, this little die that I'm going to do first would go through the die cutter, but... I'm trying to think. I think what they did on the card in the catalogue was they actually used this butterfly to cut out the negative space. So they used this to cut out on the, the, the patterned paper and then stuck the patterned paper down with the, the hole showing. I think that's how they must have done it. I'm doing it slightly different here, my own version of this. Um, so let's do that. Position it where you want it. Push it through cuts really beautifully. I am going to send it through just one more time just to make sure. It's quite an intricate die but you can see all the pieces falling out of it already. It's not really a problem. Um, just need my pokey tool or something. My tweezers to poke it out. There we go. There. And just Get rid. They're very easy to poke out. They just sometimes don't fall out. And actually, because this cardstock is still a little bit damp from the blends, it's probably worse. There we go. That's my butterfly. And then all I need to do, put that to one side. I'll clean that off afterwards. That's quite nice, isn't it? I'm going to give me an idea for another card, actually. I might save that and use that for another card. Just get rid of all the bits. And then bring in the bigger die. So this is the bigger die that you can't use separately. So I'm just going to slide under my piece of cardstock. Under my butterfly that I wanted to use. There we go. So like I said, I don't, I'm looking at it more closely. That um, sample from the catalogue. I don't think this is what they did. But this is fine for my card. Um, we get recipes for the cards in the catalogue, but unfortunately they're usually only, they only give what the ingredients, so you only get the products they use. They don't often give you um, any techniques or anything that they've used. Right, so my die cutter can now go away. I've done all the die cutting that I want to do today. And my butterfly, my grid paper, is going to go on there so it's a bit brighter than the other one this was this one was backed with pale papaya and then this i used the same colors to color it but it was on pale papaya this time i've used polished pink right and i'm just going to glue the body I'm not going to glue any more of it it will get squashed in the post but then you can um stand it up again if, if you want to or just remind the recipient to so just make sure it's straight on there there we go. Now, oh, I've got a piece of rogue. There we go, get that out. There, it's really pretty. Right, if I bring back my card blank that we made earlier, which is here, then our butterfly is going to go on here. Oh, that's quite a nice combination, isn't it? quite busy this paper but I think it works I quite like it right so I'm going to glue my butterfly down so this is the solid bit that we're gluing so we want to glue all of it oh my husband started playing and singing in the room next door I don't know if you can hear that apologies if you're getting sung to while you listen to my video there we go there and then that is just going to go yeah, and I'm leaving, doing it more towards the top than the bottom because I want to leave a space to put my sentiment. There we go. Lovely. And then I've got a stamp mounted up here, which is actually from a different stamp set. It's the Happy Birthday from In Bloom. Now, you may have seen me use this before. I've cut these stamps apart. So I'm not using 
that you are really you really are the best i'm just using the happy birthday because i've cut it apart quite like this happy birthday but i didn't really want you are the best on everything so i've cut it apart i can easily put them back together again if i need to but right there we go and let's see if we can get this straight on here That's not bad. This is Evening Evergreen I'm using here. So this is all in colours. So this was Polished Pink and Pale Papaya. This has got Fresh Freesia, Soft Succulent, even Evergreen. So it's got a little bit of all of them. So we're going to place this along here. So I'm just going to trim this with some snips. I'm just going to trim that as straight as I can. And again, actually, I might do a salon sloping. There we go. Just to change it up a little bit. We just have a sloping one there. And that is going to go there on a couple of dimensionals. So let's find my dimensionals. And then... generous with the dimensional so I don't want this to sag once it goes through the post. I wanted to be able to stand up to being a little bit squashed. There we go. And then that is our card for today. Always useful. If you're stuck, if your mojo is lacking, always useful to look through the catalogue. I'm sure there'll always be um, a sample there that you'll think, oh, I could have a go at that. And you don't necessarily have to have all the products that they use. You can improvise with your own. Right, there we are. Two beautiful butterfly cards with the pansy papers. Really pretty. Really like this method of doing the butterfly. It's really pretty. Um, so I hope you like that. I hope you've enjoyed my video today. Don't forget you can sign up to follow my blog so that you don't miss any of my posts. There'll be a link to my blog below this video and then at the bottom of my blog there's a big green button that says follow and you can just click that and put in your email and you can follow my blog. I post all my projects and all my videos and all the news and offers and things about stamping up on my blog so you won't ever miss anything if you ask for email updates and generally you will only get one email a day um won't get any more than that normally and just if i do a if i do a blog hop sometimes you get two and sometimes if i just have um important news about offers and things normally it's just one email a day thank you for that if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you've enjoyed this video then please subscribe that would be great got loads more projects to bring you in the future um and you can also on my blog sign up to my newsletter if you wanted to. And I send out a newsletter, I try and send it one, uh, once a month. I'm not that uh, that um, organised sometimes. Sometimes it's more like once every two months. But um, again, you won't miss anything important then if you sign up to my newsletter. That's it from me today though. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I do hope you'll come back and have a see, see me soon. Um, but if not, have a wonderful day and I will be back very, very soon. Bye bye.